Hello again, guys. I have one more video from Switzerland. I mean, I'm in France right now, but this is a video made in Switzerland. So this one is about my own family history. I, I did a little bit of research before my trip and decided to go up to the canton of Bern uh, for a day during my stay in Switzerland. And I'm going to apologize in advance for my pronunciation of every German city and word because I don't know German. So, sorry. You can please correct me. Um, that might be difficult to do in, in, in comments. But anyway, so I crammed it all into one day uh, since I was staying closer to Lake Geneva and Lausanne. So it was a bit rushed and uh, kind of a preview for the next trip, I suppose, because I'm sure I'll go back. I really want to go back. I was really trying to locate um, uh, relatives, distant relatives. I found one, and we met up, and, and it was wonderful. He gave me a little tour of the city of Bern, but uh, I would love to find more. If you're out there, contact me. I'd love to meet. Uh, so I'm making this video in the order that I shot the, the clips throughout the day, which is not uh, historically chronological, um, but I wanted to explain now the chronological order of my family history so you have some context. My last name is Brenneman, you should probably know that, and from my research the, the name originated with the, the brawny man, again not, not good on pronunciation. Uh, of Brony, which is a hamlet in the, in the village <laughs> of Zimmerwald. A Bronner was someone who made charcoal, roof tiles, and chalk, which was new to me this year. I didn't know that. The first record of the hamlet of Brony dates back to 1270. So we probably go back a long time. And then I wonder, where were we before that? What were we making? What were we doing? I don't know. So fast forward to 1631, when Melchior Brunemann II, the exile, was born in Oberdisbach, Bern, on the north slope of the Buchhalterberg. Um, it was already getting late in the afternoon uh, by the time I made it to this location, so I did my best to get as close to the place as possible without really knowing the area. But it's a lot of farmland as it has been for generations, probably. It's very quiet and peaceful. Um, you like cowbells? Uh, I included some at the end of this video just to sit and listen to cowbells because it's really soothing. Probably not like 24 hours a day, but soothing. Mm. So, Melchior was imprisoned in the castle of Thun uh, in 1659 at the age of 28 for being an Anabaptist or a Mennonite. Uh, I'm going to quote this. He was uh, sent free with probation. He promised only to attend preaching services in the state church. If he did not give up the Anabaptist, he was to be exiled, and if he returned, he was to be beaten with rods and driven out again. He obviously did not give up his beliefs because we next hear of his flight to uh, Grecian Germany in 1671 at age 40 uh, with his family and not many belongings. So, so I hear they're, 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 they're a donkey and they're a bed sheets or something. Um, but this was after a severe government mandate in 1670, which sent many exiles uh, from Switzerland into Germany. Most of them went up the river and were helped out by the Dutch Mennonites to, to eventually reach Pennsylvania. So... Um, Melchior actually died in Germany in 1678, but many of his nine children from two uh, wives, I believe one died at one point, uh, many of the children did make the journey, including the one I am a descendant of, whose name was also Melchior. So, uh, so I did visit the castle of Thun. I was in a bit of a rush because I got there right as it was closing at five, but when I explained that my ancestor had been in prison there, um, I was let in, and the woman was just very, very sweet, very kind. Uh, gave me a brief overview of the castle as well. Told me that she told me that fact about them going up the river, 
Uh, she told me that the third floor was used as a torture chamber and the fourth floor was uh, where the prisoners were held. Uh, she said at that time there were about 150, they for some reason don't have good records of this, but they said roughly 150 people were in prison there uh, for their Anabaptist beliefs and about 20 died or were killed while, uh, while at the castle. So, so my, my ancestor escaped and here I am today and, and if you're related to Melchior, please let me know. Mm, that's the brief history, so now we'll get on to my little video tour and I hope you enjoy it and please comment uh, if we're related. Thank you. I am in Bern, Switzerland now. On an adventure. So this is a distant relative, I... Casper, or say it in all your languages. Kaspu, Kasper, however you want, it's, it's okay. Yes, but I'll he's, to he's a, a Bronneman, and we're going to figure out how we are connected. Uh, but we're definitely connected somewhere. We're definitely connected so, somewhere. Yeah. So yes. Long, long time ago. Okay. So here we are in Switzerland. In Bern. Ta-da! Um, yeah. So. Cool. I'll come back and visit sometime. That's cool. We'll find more of us. Then. Of course. Of course. I, I know. I know some more. Of <laughs> a giant family reunion. <laughs> All right. Okay. Perfect. Bye bye. bye. Just staying here. We lived here for a couple of years. Uh -huh. okay. And came up with the theory of relativity here. So. We're gonna go watch the clock tower. It's noon, almost noon. We can show. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is the oldest road in Bang. Pretty cute. I'm in the town of Oberdiesbach. Um, I'm not totally sure where the uh, historic part is. I'm aiming for a castle now. I figure that's pretty old. Um, but this is where the Brennemans, Bronemans, whatever, lived basically, or our line lived uh, between the late 1500s and the time when we were kicked out. So gonna check out this area although they didn't well who knows um, I have two conflicting reports one says well Melchior lived on the north slope of this uh, one mountain that's a little bit to the south and another account that said he was from this other area that's a little to the east so I'm not totally sure I'll try to check those out as well it's about 3.30 in the afternoon here, but uh, let's check out the castle and see if there's any kind of medieval town around. Everything's a little modern. Hmm. Um, there must have been nothing here when we lived here. Um, but yeah, here we are. Swiss houses. Switzerland has many of these water things around. Italy has a lot of fountains too. It's really nice because it's drinkable water. So, I'll bet they don't buy nearly as many. Plastic bottles is really that's my new home. Oh wait, I think that's the castle. <laughs> I'll go around and see if this is a public thing or not. Not totally sure. No, seems to be a privately owned castle. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's probably been here for a very long time. It's pretty old. Uh, but yeah, let's see. I think I will drive on my next location. There's a little more of the town. I mean, 99% of this stuff was not here uh, 400 years ago. <laughs> but, but here we are. I wonder what it looked like back then. I wonder if anything other than the castle is still standing. <laughs> so this is uh, the Kulterberg. Um as far as I know from online research, uh, and according to the cantonal 
archives of Bern, someone said. Oh, there's a graveyard cemetery. I should go up there. Um, but this is somewhere around here is where, where Melchior the Exile lived with his seven kids and wife. Come here! Come here! I'm gonna say hello to a cow. So, and take a picture, I guess. Oh yeah, this is uh, the last place our line lived. Somewhere on the north slope. Over here, I guess. That's pretty cool. Mm. So this is Toon Castle. Um, part of it used to be a prison. <laughs> Sorry, I'm walking uphill. I kind of ran because I think it's closing. Um, but this is where Melchior the Exile was um, imprisoned before being exiled, obviously. I visited here a long time ago, but I'd really like to go in again. <sighs> Let's see if I can. I believe she said that she used this room as a torture chamber. up here were the dungeons. So this would have been the view, sort of. Oh, a granary and prison. Before I forget to say something, uh, the woman there, the kind woman who let me in past closing time, uh, told me that uh, the Mennonites, Anabaptists, um, left up the river. They went up the river uh, to Germany and then uh, to Holland where the Dutch helped them to escape to America. So thank you, Dutch. I wonder if I have any Brennemans up there? Okay, so this 
is Brony, <laughs> where we get our last name. guys, this is it. This is Brony, where we started. Or like when we, where we actually got a last name. I'm not sure what we were before that, but um, I guess the earliest recorded Brony men, which um, actually referred to a trade making uh, charcoal, roof tiles, and chalk. Uh, the first recorded uh, Brony men was in 1270. I don't have his name. I just have records dating back to 1500, 14 something, I think, but this is it. This is where we come from, kind of. I don't know where we were before that. We're all related somehow, so I'll turn the camera around.